So just got done with a third party inspection, and we'll talk a little bit about what a third party inspection is. We represent the seller in this particular case, and the buyer's agent came over, and I said, okay, where's the inspector? When are we getting started? And they said, oh, I'm going to do the inspection. And I said, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You're doing the inspection? And to answer your question before you ask it, no, they're not a certified contractor or anything like that. Um, <laughs> and that, that just takes this down a whole entirely different road or direction of to each its own but mm. i exactly <laughs> people were making a purchase here that in our area we're talking millions of dollars mm. and this is a situation where the buyer didn't want to do an inspection or pay for the inspection which they run about 400 500 dollars somewhere between yeah. 350 and 450 yeah, depending on depending the size depending on of the, the size of the home and the buyer Definitely chose a good investment sorry. it's <laughs> one of the best investments <laughs> But this buyer didn't want to make that investment, and so the agent stepped in and said, well, I'll do the inspection for you. We are not experts in construction. We're not experts in the condition of a home. You know, definitely not an electrician, not a plumber, don't understand those things. I understand when I see a crack that there's a crack there, mm -hmm. and throughout the years of experience that I've had in the industry, I have a good idea um, in a lot of cases you know what it means and whether or not it's serious or not serious sure. but or over time you when you go through those inspections you have things that continuously come up like Correct. the water heater maybe it's not strapped correctly and so you know the vernacular of what that actually means Correct. Correct. things like that you know i think our, what our experience really gives us is the ability to ask the right questions of the inspector mm -hmm. um, when we're looking at things, you know, being able to highlight what this means and when we actually have a concern and when we don't. But mm -hmm. anyway, we're not going to talk about that person who decided to do their inspection. I would not recommend that. Um, my recommendation, as Michelle said, that $400, $450 investment is one of the best investments that you can make when you're buying a house. But let's talk about third party inspection, what they are, what they cover, and Let's dive deep into them. Dive deep? Dive deep. Let's dive deep. So a third-party inspection is someone that is actually hired to come and find everything they can possibly find wrong with the house. That's their sole purpose, is to check every plug, make sure everything works. They turn on every light. They look at the ceiling. They they go in the attic. They a lot of times do drones of your roof. They... You know, they'll do everything. They flush every toilet. They they check everything. Um, it takes about anywhere. I've had sh really short ones where uh, buyers bring in their inspector and it lasts 30 minutes. I don't know what they're looking at, yeah. but 30 minutes. Ours, uh, our inspector that we use generally takes anywhere between three and four hours on the house. He goes through everything, everything. everything. And then if you need to do additional inspections, that's important. He'll too. make those recommendations based on what he finds. Yeah. So if he finds something that he's concerned about in a specific area, mm -hmm. he'll call it out on the re inspection report of, hey, we want a second opinion on this from somebody who specializes in this particular thing. Right. An example can be uh, air conditioning or something. He's he's finding a, a what could be a small problem and he's not certain. So he'll say, hey, bring out this person and let's make sure we don't have something serious going on here. We had a situation with that just recently where um, it was the air conditioning was, what is this, horizontal, no, oh, vertical, vertical. <laughs> in the attic. And, um, Actually, it's horizontal. Horizon, horizontal, yeah. horizontal <laughs> in the attic. And uh, he made the suggestion because it was an original one as well so it's from 1999 or 2000 so it's 23 years old that uh he made the suggestion that the uh gas company come out and take a look at it just to make sure the plumbing and everything is good especially since it was in the attic you don't want those issues right so it was just a safety thing it still worked it still functioned he wasn't making a big deal out of it that was it so sometimes you have to do those little extra steps all right yeah. so when we're talking about inspectors, and one of the things that you had mentioned early on was that they check everything and they look at everything. Ever have one of those sellers or one of those? Yeah, we'll, we'll stick to the sellers. We ever have one of those sellers that's, we don't need an inspection. My house is perfect. All the time. Yeah. 
<laughs> no house is perfect. <laughs> Michelle had mentioned that the inspector's job is to find all the problems mm -hmm. with the house. Every house has problems. We're looking for whether or not they're a serious problem or, you know, not so serious problem, an easy fix, a hard fix. We're looking for those, those major things that mm -hmm. could turn into bigger problems and cost a lot of money down the road if they're not handled now. I, exactly. So I would like to say it's kind of like uh, buying a used car. You want to take it to a um, mechanic to look at all the systems, the major systems. That's what's extremely important. So your heating, your air conditioning, the roof, the foundation, you know, your electrical, those are your main systems. It would be like, uh, like I said, going to the me mechanic and seeing if the engine works and, you know, all that kind of stuff. The cosmetic things would be uh, dinks on the side of the car, you know, okay, maybe your fender needs to be readjusted or, you know, those types of things. Those would be the minor things like, okay, GFI is not, you know, uh, in the bathroom or, uh, gosh, there's some cracks in your tile in the, in the shower or, you know, those types of things. <laughs> that are smaller items in the big scope of reality. And you bring up another point. Sometimes a lot of things that get called out in an inspection is what's code now, mm -hmm. but when the house was built was not necessarily code. Mm -hmm. So those get called out, and that's a decision that everybody has to make is, are we bringing it up to code before we close escrow? Or we just recognize that, you know, this isn't broken. This is just the way it was when they built the house, and there was nothing wrong with it. Right. It was a feature of the home, and it was current at the time. And Correct. that's another important thing because we get that quite a lot Correct. where a buyer will say, oh, well, it's not it's not industry standard because that's what the <laughs> inspector puts on there because he knows what those standards are now. And so he brings it up that, oh, so we have to have that conversation of this is actually an upgrade. So there's a difference. Maybe that's the next conversation is what's an upgrade <laughs> and what's a non-upgrade. <laughs> safety issues, non-safety issues. But let's let's talk real quick about when to do the inspection and when's a typical time that an inspection is done. So an inspection is done during the contingency period time. And what the contingency period time, I like to call it that discovery time, the time when... Good, good use of words. Yeah, thank yes. you. Thank you. So it's the discovery time of when you're actually you fell in love with the house now you're finding out you're you're in that dating period right you're finding out what's really that house is about and that's when you want to do the inspection I like to advise our, our clients to do it sooner than later yeah. so within the first few days like four days at least um, so that you can process and have enough time to make some decisions on what's important to you and what's not important to you. Because if there is, let's say, a 10-day contingency time frame or a 10-day discovery period time frame, and you wait till day nine, you're not in the right mindset to know what's important and what's not important. Also, you won't have enough time to get other inspections if you need to. And then right. that pushes and makes everybody feel like a bad taste in your right. mouth. So we want to do that as soon as possible, usually within the first couple of days, the first few days when an mm -hmm. escrow gets open. Because you're correct, if that inspector finds something or is uncertain about something and they're, they're asking for second opinions, you want to have enough time to get those second opinions out there and making sure that those, those things get done. Exactly. All right. Exactly. But anyway, third-party inspections. Do them. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you've got any questions about a third-party inspection or more about what that means, um, feel free to drop a comment down below and let us know your thoughts. And please, if you like what you're hearing, like and subscribe.